Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year. It's the 3rd of January and amazingly, it's not raining. The pike rods are out. They went out at first light. And um, this is going to be pike tutorial number three. Now, I've come back to a lake that I haven't pike fished for many, many years. Now, I'm going back probably 30 years to when I was in my early 20s. And the lake at the back of the complex was where I caught my first ever 20. So back then, the back length seemed to produce the bigger fish, but this club has actually put a few slightly better fish and stocked into this complex. And I've been told to come back here, fish the front lake, and you know, we'll see how it goes today. And you may have remembered in my first video, I talked about when I come to a new venue, not exactly a new venue, but I need to find out what method works. And the only way you can do that is to put some time in. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna put some time in. This lake is right on my doorstep, so it's great in these, these rainy kind of uh, spell when the river, which is where I would much rather be fishing, or the estate lake, which is unfortunately full of chocolate water. So I, can, I might come here a few times just to, you know, suss it out. And I've got two methods out here today, and this is what I would say to anybody approaching a new venue for the first time, is one, and the rigs go out there with a bottom bait. As I said, a sardine, a roach, maybe a smelt, one of your, my three favorite baits, or, and the other rod will have a pop-up on. Now, certain lakes respond to pop-ups much better than bottom baits. Um, going back to Frencham Great Pond, I um, popped up a bait just off the bottom. I'll show you the rig later because it, I had to uh, modify a standard shop bought pop-up trace. Um, and the pop-up works so much better than the bottom bait. So today's topic is to show you a few ways of popping baits up. Hopefully, whilst I'm doing that, one of the, uh, the alarms are sound and maybe a pike will turn up. It's still really, really mild. As I said, it's the third of Jan. Um, the cold spell, hopefully, is going to turn up. The rivers are going to find down. I'm going to be able to get back on there. The estate lake's going to kind of lose its colour and come back to what it should be really, really clear. And I'll be able to fish the river test as well without it racing through and enjoy a bit of grading fishing. So as I said, today's topic, popped up baits. Um, let's get on and let's show you those rigs. Okay, let's talk about the three ways that I would pop a pike dead bait up. Let's start with the easiest, and that is simply a red poly ball on the end of the trace that pops your bait up and gives it a little bit of movement in the water. Very easy, you can buy these traces ready made. Most of them are probably shorter than the 24 inch traces that I have to use on some of my club lakes. So I actually make my own traces here. The ready-made ones come about 18 inches, which again, fall in with a lot of people's, you know, venues regulations. And 18 inches off the bottom is about, is a good height in deep water. 24 inches, it's too, too high up in shallow water, a lot of the lakes I fish. So quite often I make my own pop-up traces and I just incorporate a swivel there, put some tungsten putty there and then I keep him within the regulations of 24 inches. So as you can see, little red poly ball on the end of the treble there, a couple of size sixes in your sardines, in your naturals. What I would actually say here is popping baits up is, gets a little bit technical because when you buy frozen baits, um, from let's say Morrison's, the fishmongers, they come in all different sizes, which causes you a problem because when you actually throw or cast a sardine, a mackerel, a herring, whatever, out into the lake frozen, it's already popped up straight off the lead. It's got that natural buoyancy due to the ice and being frozen, which is great if you're fishing over weed or a bit of chod or a bit of silt because slowly that will defrost and that will fall down. So always remember when you cast a sardine out just on as a bottom bait, if it's frozen, 
it's going to be popped up straight off the lead and then it's going to fall away. That's great and I have actually caught fish when the baits have gone straight out, put the bobbin on and it's gone even when it's been frozen. So you will get the odd run on a frozen bait, especially when a pike hears that splash, sees that that dead bait kind of fall through the water and its instinct is to hit it. But generally, if you're gonna pop a bait up, it's much better to have a defrosted one. And that's where the problems come because my advice is if you, um, you go to the supermarket, you get sardines, kind of put all the same size ones into a packet play about with a bucket of water in the sink at home by putting a poly ball on there and then you'll probably find that you know like a a four inch sardine needs a small a small popper a six inch bait needs a bigger popper you could even weigh that take some notes and then you might even go home mount a couple of these baits with your trebles up in freeze them and then bring them down and you're all ready to go you just tie your trace on cast out knowing jolly well when that bait defrosts it's still going to be popped up so the little red poppers they kind of make it look as if like a roach's uh, fin a bit of red um, it won't if anything it attract a pike that movement it makes with the actual undertow etc so that is the way i pop my baits up in most cases the biggest pike I ever caught was 3110 out of Fort Park. Many years ago, I was fishing in 18 inches of water and I had my bait popped straight up off the lead. And the bites you get on these, normally a pike would come up, it'd be eyeing up your, your bait popped up, which would be moving and it might just move a little bit more. The pike hits it and what you'll get is a screaming take, only going to be lasting for, you know, a matter of two or three seconds. It'll just go beep and then it'll stop. That pike has hit the bait, got it in its mouth, and when it stops, you still, just because it stops, don't think it's dropped the bait. Wind down and hit it. So popping baits up, I'll go through the indicator system I use because that does differ sometimes. Obviously, if I've got a bait pop straight up off the lead and I'm using one of my little homemade bobbins and there's that bait, it's just gonna slowly lift up off the bottom and my bobbin's gonna go up. So that's when one of the few cases I do use a drop-off indicator, but I'll go through that when I go through the next setup. Okay, let's talk about the second way of popping a bait up, or in this case, giving it some buoyancy, critically balancing it. And this is what we call the bait flipper. And here I've got a small joey mackerel. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of foam, which is connected to the trace by a couple of cable, cable ties. Again, size six hooks in there. And what that actually does is that doesn't pop your bait straight up off the bottom. But what it does is it brings your bait down very slowly. And again, as I said, if it's, fro if it's frozen, it's gonna be popped up. But as that defrosts, it's gonna really sink very, very slowly. Carp anglers try to do this with their boilies, drilling them out and putting foam in. So when a fish comes along and sucks it up, it just easily goes into the carp's mouth. We're trying to do the same for pike. When a pike comes along and it actually picks that bait up, it goes in a lot easier. But the lovely thing about this bait flipper and the design here is the color of the foam can be changed. Again, you get your baits, if you buy them from, like I used to, bait box, which is unfortunately no longer, but if you buy them from the tackle shop, your baits are generally all the same size. So you can experiment with those baits and actually, once you've got those, you know, a defrosted bait and you've got it sinking critically balanced, you can cut some bits of foam, put that into that packet, make a note, and of course, straight away, you know what size foam is needed to pop a joey mackerel up of a certain size it all sounds a bit technical and it is initially but a lot of that homework you can do at home so when you actually go out there when you cast out you know exactly what your bait is doing but the lovely thing about the bait flipper is one you can change the color does that make a difference it might to your confidence and if you can give yourself more confidence then yeah it's worth experimenting with but what that does is it actually allows that bait just to drop slowly and let's say you've got a bit of silkweed, a bit of chod, that bait will actually land on there and it will sit with these hooks facing upwards. So it's not gonna go down there and get that caught in the weed. It will always fall down like that, lay on that weed, on that debris, on that silt, ready for a pipe to come along and pick up. And when I'm using a bait with the head on, 
which you've seen quite often I do because I cast quite regularly, I do chop the head off on the river, chopping the head off just leaks all that oil out. It's a great way of attracting pike, getting that out. It's just get a baiting needle and just pierce your bait through the skin and that will leak off slowly. So the bait flipper, a fantastic way of presenting a bait over, let's say silkweed, which can be one of the, the hardest sort of um, material or vegetation to, to present a bait over. Superb way, with the mackerel you're using, you can cast that quite a way out. So yeah, if you haven't tried it, get on it, because that is a very, very good way of presenting a bait, as I said, over silkweed. Okay, let's talk about the third way of popping a bait up. And this can be one of the most effective ways of popping a bait up if you get it right. It's also the hardest way of popping a bait up. And this is a large sardine and you really need to use this method on bigger baits. And I don't know if you can see it, but in the fish's mouth is a balsa stick. And again, you can buy these in different sizes. You get small balsa sticks, medium, large, all depending on the baits you use. This is quite a large sardine, as you can see, head still on. And what you do is there's two ways of doing this. You get your balsa stick, as you can see there, and you can insert that into the fish's mouth. Now, I would do these again when they're defrosted. Even if I buy them from a tackle shop and they're all the same size, I'd probably try and defrost them. Not, you know, slowly, not completely. Get all my balsa sticks, just test, make sure that the pres presentation is as I want it. And then rig these up with the, the trebles on, balsa sticks in, on your wild trace and freeze them like that. Take one or two to the lake with you, some back up in a packet. Um, and again, you're good to go. And what you've got is, you've just got, again, my two size six trebles mounted, as I always do, one nearest the swivel in the towel, one in the body. And then I've got a tiny little split ring here and I've got some braid. And on there, as you can see, in there, if I can get that out, is a balsa stick. This is a small one. And what that will do is that will actually pop your bait up so the towel is on the bottom if you do it correctly. Yes, you can put a bigger balsa stick in and it lifts it straight off the lead or you can have what I call a hinge rig, which I'll show you later, which I used at Frencham to, to great effect because I wanted the bait just popped up off the bottom, not 24 inches off the bottom. So a great way, a good presentation on a fishery that is pressured where the fish are quite finical, you know, the bites, they can pick baits up and drop baits easy because obviously you've got a big red poly ball or you've got a bit of foam there. They might get a little bit cute, whereas with the balsa stick, it's actually in the fish's mouth. You can actually push it into the body as well if you want and then freeze them again. Again, by doing that, you've already got some leak off or you can cut the head off. And again, just playing around with the size of the bolster stick, the size of the bait. You'll have to do it at home. You'll have to, you know, as I said earlier, it sounds quite technical and fiddly, but once you know what size bolster stick goes in, what size baits, then, you know, you're pretty much ready to go. So a lovely way of actually just popping that up off the towel and that just gives it that tiny little bit of movement. And that can make all the difference between using a static dead bait laid on the bottom to one popped up off the bottom. So there you have it, the three ways of popping a bait up. The bait flipper, great over silkweed. The little poly ball, which you can buy. The ready-made traces, pop them straight up off the lead. And then you've got a bit more fiddly presentation, but get it right, you can get that balance straight off the towel and an absolutely deadly method. I'm just gonna quickly run through in a few minutes just to set up on the bobbins um, and the bite indication because as I pretty, pretty much say, I very, very, very rarely do I use any type of drop-off indicator. Um, three instances, long range using braid, on the river 
when I'm looking for very sensitive bites and when I'm using a pop-up because obviously if I was using my light little bobbin and I put a bait up, popped up, that bobbin would just lift and my bait would come up on the surface. So you need to fish a tight line pretty much when you're fishing a pop-up. Okay, let's just talk about bite indication. Very, very important. And uh, as you know, in most cases, I just use my little homemade red poly ball paper clip isotope. And even when you're fishing a pop-up, you can push that into the ground, gives that a little bit of resistance, tight line. When a pike hits the pop-up, it just pops it up, bobbing comes up and away you go. Um, it can be quite annoying on a windy day because um, your pop-up is, you know, you've got that tension on that line and it can just uh, pop out. You can use a conventional drop-off indicator. Now I've always said these, I use these, um, the only time I use these is I'm fishing at range and I'm looking at sort of 70, 80, 90, 100 yards, maybe taking a bait out on a bait boat, again, somewhere like Frencham, where the bait fish are, but generally all my fishing is done in close using the homemade bobbins. Um, if I was fishing at range, then I'd be fishing with braids. So a slight pull and that straight off drops down and you're away. But these in the wrong hand can be quite dangerous because quite often pike anglers tend to cast their baits out, especially inexperienced pike anglers, cast their baits out and you know, on a river you'll get a tap and it might be a beep, and those guys might just not be switched on and realize that that's the pike picking the bait up, drop off indicator, hasn't done anything, and then when the line does go and that drops off, the pike is gonna be deep hooked. So be very careful. I use these only when I'm fishing at long range and only when I'm fishing braid, okay? And then you've gotta set them really lightly. So as soon as that pike picks the bait up, that bobbin, that indicator drops off and you're away. Now, as you can see here, I'm only fishing mono. I'm fishing quite close range. I've got a pop-up. So ideally, I want to fish this line tight to that lead. Keeps a, the keeps a pop-up where I want it. And obviously here, we've all got them. Tiny little bug indicator that I use from occlusion fishing. And as you can see, I can tighten that up. That's too loose. I can just tighten that up a little bit more and you're away. And a pike will pick that up, bang, and you're away. So drop off indicators, that's a homemade one and it serves its purpose when I'm fishing really close range with a pop-up or a bait, a dead bait, straight off the lead. And again, easy to set up. Pop it in there, tighten that up as hard as you can and as you can see we are away pike picks that up moves an inch or less that drops off alarm sounds and as i said when a pike hits a pick uh, a pop-up it can just be a sort of like a couple of seconds beep, and then stop close your bail up wind down hit it because that pike will have hit it, stopped, and then we'll be eating that bait. Well, as you can see, I've moved swims. In fact, I've moved lakes now. Two hours on the front lake, um, and didn't see anything, never had a touch. I was with my brother, who's fishing for carp. Did see a carp move, but these conditions are absolutely fantastic. In fact, they've probably been too good all winter because you want a spell like this, like a, a week or two weeks in the winter, not weeks and well, literally months of mild weather and rain like we've had. So um, whilst I was talking to him, he mentioned when we were youngsters that that front lake never used to respond on sea baits. It was much more naturals like a natural roach or a live bait as we used to fish a lot when we were younger. So I've come back to this back swim, back, back lake, and this swim is, is actually the one I caught my first ever 20 pound pike, 20 pound four ounces. And I caught that on a float fished small skimmer live bait. And I just want to clarify a comment that a gentleman made on the last video saying that my comment was ridiculous that live baits won't catch big pike. I never actually said that, I said generally, a live bait will attract 
numbers of small fish. But a live bait, if you fish them all the time, sooner or later, a big, big pike will come along as it did when I was younger here. But generally, I find that if I was to catch, I don't know, a dozen fish on live baits out of certain like club venues that don't contain many big fish, the average size would be smaller than maybe a dozen fish caught on dead baits. But again, if you look at somewhere like the River Wye in Hereford, and although you're not allowed to use live baits, um, those pike are shoaling up the small fish as they are down on the Avon and on numerous other venues, um, you know, rivers and canals more to the point than lakes across the country. And if you were allowed to use live baits and you put them where those big pike or those pike all sizes are hoarded up those small fish, then you're gonna catch 20, 30 pound pike on live baits. So I just wanted to clarify that. I was really more talking about the venues like the club lakes that I fish. If I wanna catch, you know, the big fish in there, um, I'm probably gonna have to sit out and play a waiting game, catch less fish, but then kind of like, don't attract the smaller fish. But, you know, generally, the live baits will give you a lot more action and it catch fish of all sizes and sooner or later, as this gentleman said, it will catch you big fish. Well, as you can see, move number three. I'm just putting that one out. That's a critically balanced bait just with the bolster stick in the mouth. So it's just popped up so it's towels on the bottom. Don't know why, but I've been sitting here thinking of this swim all day I've only got four hours but it's very very important to move around especially if it's a new venue you need to find out where those pike are held up and then when you do you can then start fishing that area around that area So I'm fishing a buoyant bait, so I'm just going to put that, press my little bobbin into the ground and away we go. Yeah, very, very important when you're, you come to a new venue is just keep moving around. We do it on a river, or I do it on a river, and then when you find that, that, that area where the pike are going to be holed up for one reason or another, maybe they just feel comfortable and there's food there, um, you can then concentrate in that sort of area because the pike aren't going to be spread evenly around a lake. They're going to be in certain areas and you need to find that. And the only way you're going to do that is keep moving around, fishing a bottom bait and a pop-up until you get that run and then you home in on them. Third swim, second rod going out. Nice fresh sardine. Chop that head off. I'm only here, I'm going to fish this swim for an hour. So I want a load of kind of leak off of those oils and blood, get it out there and hopefully something can pick up on that scent trail and I'll be in. Well, I'm in my third swim, just put fresh baits out. Obviously, every time I change swim or I recast, I put a fresh bait on and that can leave you with a lot of off cuts like the heads and the bodies, etc., etc., that are a little bit washed out. And I would always recommend you take these home because if you have got a local lake, then you can keep these, chop them up, and you can pre either pre bait with these, or when you actually get down to a lake and you found that hot spot, you can maybe get a spom out, defrost all those off cuts, and then just spom out, clip up use your marker sticks, just like a carp angler does. Because let's face it, how many of us pike anglers do that? All carp anglers, tench anglers, cruising carp, whatever I'm fishing for, I'm gonna use a feeder, a PVA bag. I'm gonna catapult a few boilies out, maybe use a bait boat and drop some dead maggot and some, when I'm using the worm kebab or some hemp and corn when I'm fishing for grasses. And just cast in a sardine out or a mackerel out, that'll catch your fish but generally you are casting blind especially you know if you're not in a, an area so my my kind of 
type tactics would be on a new venue. Eyes open, talk to other anglers, um, keep moving around till you find that hot spot and then possibly take all these off cuts home, chop them up, freeze them down, night before, defrost them, get a little spawn, take your trace off, clip up, put a spawn of fish bits out in that area and you know you're good to go you're attracting those pike into the area but you're not actually feeding them so uh, a great little tip and it's something that i am going to come on to in my next video about enhancing baits does it work doesn't it work um pre-baiting again does it work doesn't it work i've had some fantastic results pre-baiting but i've also had some disasters and uh but as I said, I'll talk to you next time about that. And uh, hopefully, before I go home today, a fish will turn up. Another great thing is all your traces. Keep them neat and tidy on one of these rig boxes. You can't have enough. I've got three of them here. I've got some with single hooks on, some with pop-ups, uh, some with balance, you know, quickly balanced rigs, some single hooks, some double hooks, size eight, size sixes, so forth. So yeah, as I say, um, today doesn't look like it's gonna happen. I didn't really come here thinking that it was gonna be massively productive. It just gave me somewhere local that I could come down, you know, do another video for you, help you to understand you know, the, how to pop baits up and maybe put a few more fish in your nets. Uh, ideally, I want to be on the river at the moment or the estate lake, but one's up and coloured and one's coloured. The, the estate lake is normally quite shallow and generally clear, but it is just completely chocolate at the moment and the river, I can't even get close to it. At the end of, well, by the time you see this video, I'm hoping that we've got a cold snap come in it is forecasting and it's going to be a prolonged one where we can get some sort of consistency, um, get back on the river, move about, bring you an in session where you see me putting a few of these tactics into, you know, operation and hopefully catching some fish. So, uh, yeah, um, you know, it's not over yet. Um, hopefully we've got about another 45 minutes here, an hour in this swim and that'll be it for me early afternoon. Move off. I will take a little bit from today not from where i fish but there is one other pike angler on here and he has actually missed a run he was here before me so well before it got light he has moved to swim but not from one lake to another only a few yards so there's a reason why he's here really early there's a reason why he's fishing that area and you've got to take little kind of like info like that i'm not going to say i'm going to go jumping in this swim but he's an angler that probably knows you know, as locate some fish and that's why he's there. So uh, yeah, hopefully before the end of the, uh, the next hour, we'll get a run. Well, something I mentioned in one of my earlier videos was about trace making and I kept it quite basic there. Um, but the great thing about making your own traces is if you come up against a situation and you're thinking, ah, oh, that pop-up rig is just too, too high in the water, let's say, um, you've got a shallow lake like, um, and in, th in this instant, it was when I was fishing French and Great Pond, 60 acres, relatively shallow, fishing along the reed margins. And it was about sort of not even chest deep, I would say. And if I was to pop up a bait 24 inches, you know, a couple of feet or so, what I was getting was I was getting every coot, birds, seagulls above looking down because it's so clear. They, the seagulls were kind of like telling the coots where the baits were. I even had the grebes picking the baits up because it was just too high in the water and I wanted to get that bait right down quite close. But I also wanted to pop up because that venue is so large. It, you get a bit of movement in your bait and it was one that I, when I first started fishing a bottom bait and a pop-up bait, that the pop-up bait worked better. So I was faced with a 24-inch trace. Now, how can I pop a bait up? Yes, I can critically balance with bolster sticks. Um, but what I did was I made up my own trace, poly ball, two number, size sixes. And I brought that down to a little swivel, crimped a swivel on, and then added the amount of wire I needed to make it legal and keep within the rules, 24 inches. 
and then depending on the size of bait I was using I was able to put some carp anglers tungsten putty around that swivel and that was able to pop my bait up off the bottom literally a few inches you know the tail was I don't know near enough four three or four inches off the bottom movement there and I believe me the amount of fish I caught was absolutely incredible. Compared with a single, you know, a bottom bait, this was out fishing it. But don't get me wrong, on some venues, the estate lake I'm fishing, I've tried popping baits up, doesn't work. Really surprises me, fairly shallow, good head of silverfish, but no, bottom baits every time. So you have to experiment, you have to play about with rigs. Um, and as I said here, I have actually, and I'm just started using another rig where I can make it adjustable so I can fish it right on the bottom but popped up or if I need to fish it 24 inches, very rare I need to do that, I can do. I'll show you that rig in another video but for now what we call like a carp angler's hinge rig, you want to get a bait pop just up at the bottom, off the bottom in a shallow water and you are restricted to certain rules then there are ways of doing it. Well that's it, early afternoon. I've been here about five hours. You're, uh, I've moved swims three times. You're not gonna suss it out, a lake, a new lake, even one that you fished before, albeit it was 30 odd years ago. But I fished, I've moved around different lakes, free swims, um, nice fresh baits, rigs that I'm confident in, but no, didn't see, didn't have any takes. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm driving about in a very small, not uh, a typical angler's car. Let's just be very careful. I don't take the windscreen out while I'm doing that. But unfortunately, 20 or so, well, more than 20 weeks ago, um, I gave my Audi A4 to Audi Europe. They still have it. Um, Unfortunately, it's a corrupt software problem that they can't fix. So uh, if you have an Audi and you've got an AdBlue problem or your little sensor starts bleeping a bit, few more times than my, uh, my alarms did today, then be worried, be very worried because uh, this is a bit of a embarrassing situation with Audi. They've said they'll fix it in their time scale. Yeah. And uh, no curtsy car, so I'm on this. And it's not even an old car or high mileage. So uh, yeah, anyway, moving on. Next video will probably be in a couple of weeks time. Hopefully I won't be in this. I'll be back in my uh, proper bigger fishing car. But um, I'll tell you more if I'm not. And uh, yeah, just wishing you all a very, very fish filled, healthy 2024. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've got a few more tips there. I'd like to be out and doing an in session where, you know, on the river or one of the lakes. And hopefully by the time you, you watch this, it's going to be cold, clear, and we'll get some sort of consistency in our weather. So yeah, if you, uh, thumbs up, give us a few comments, um, take it easy and make sure you get out there and catch loads of fish in the new year.